Hi, in this video we're going to look at why we should run parallel requests in our performance tests. After we discuss the advantages, we will then go through reports which demonstrate the concept and will show how parallel requests can assist us in the goal of running realistic performance tests that mimic actual user traffic. One of the most important goals in performance testing is to simulate as closely as possible actual traffic to your site. There are a number of ways to create an extremely realistic testing experience using such tools as parameterization, random think time, and parallel requests. Each of these tools helps simulate traffic in its own unique way. Parameterization allows each user the use of their own unique data. Random think time simulates the pauses that a real user would make when traversing the application and parallel requests closely mimic the behavior of actual browsers. Just to clarify, by parallel requests I mean running simultaneous requests for each virtual user. When you fetch a page, your browser sends out multiple requests simultaneously which bring back images, JavaScript, and various other elements of page content. These parallel requests help the browser display pages faster. However, some performance testing tools replay traffic sequentially, that is, requesting the elements of a page one by one, only requesting the next item after the previous one has been received. This slide shows a waterfall chart depicting the first page of a scenario that was recorded on a travel site. As you can clearly see, each request fully executes, meaning the request is issued and the response fully comes back before the next request is issued. This is what we mean when we say sequential requests. Many load testing tools perform in this manner. As you can imagine, this paradigm does lead to longer processing times and to results that do not really correspond to your actual user experience. This next slide presents a waterfall chart depicting the same page but making use of parallel requests, just like a browser. As you can clearly see, multiple requests go out at the same time and the results also come back in parallel. Because of this, the page comes back in half the time that it did using sequential requests. There is of course a trade-off here. We're actually loading the server more than before as we are compressing the scenario. This is the way that browsers work and it makes sense to test your applications this way in order to get accurate results. Here are the timings returned from the two different paradigms. There's actually a middle ground, which we will not depict here, although it's worth mentioning. Some load testing tools allow for parallel requests, but do not base this on the actual browser results. Example, a tool may allow you to configure the number of parallel requests, ignoring what the browser did. This will speed processing, but will do so in an unnatural way. It is important to record which request the browser ran in parallel and duplicate that for your tests. Each browser treats parallel requests a little differently. Some allow more or less concurrency than others, for example. The next obvious question is how can I make use of this in my testing? And what use cases benefit from parallel request processing? We will now run through a common use case, and I will then go through some results of load testing using Load Complete that address this use case, and we will be utilizing parallel requests. Here is some information in order to plan our test. The test is going to be done on a travel and tour site. It doesn't get a lot of traffic, but it's generally steady. So for most of the time, you probably have a very small number of users on the site. Sometimes it peaks up a little bit more. Analytics tells us that the largest number of concurrent users never exceeds five. So five is a really busy time for us. The site plans to double their business over the next 12 months. So, based on this information, we know that the application needs to be able to handle up to 10 concurrent users, and we would hope that the site would perform reasonably well at that level of load. Management has decided that a response time of 10 seconds per page is acceptable as a start. Uh, as we can all imagine, 10 seconds per page is not where we want to be at the end of all of this, but it's a good place to start and management wants to get started with using 10 seconds as that 
limit. So we're going to set up our test parameters. We're going to go out and record our scenario against the travel site. The first thing that we're going to do and something that you should do every time is validate your scenario. Validation is a single virtual user, a single time through your scenario. And all you're doing is checking to make sure that your recording doesn't have any errors in it. Next, we're going to have a baseline, which is one virtual user running for 10 minutes. And that's going to tell us what our performance is at the lowest level of use. Then we're going to look at our current peak which is only five virtual users. We're going to ramp up to five virtual users and our test is going to run for 10 minutes. We'll look at those results. And then we're going to look at our projected peak over the next 12 months and ramp up to 10 virtual users and run that test for 10 minutes. So let's take a look at our load tests. Okay, so now we've stepped a little bit into the future. I have created our scenario using load complete. I've also created our tests and I'll step you through a little bit of that right now. Here is our scenario and we took four pages and ran a recording of those four pages and turned it into our scenario. We can see things at the page level but in load complete, you can also look at things in a very granular way um, and look at them on a request basis. These are the requests that make up those pages that we were just looking at. Collapse that for now. We have one validation run. A validation run is a single virtual user running your scenario a single time. And the reason that we validate, this is a best practice by the way, is to just to make sure that our recording doesn't have any problems. That we recorded everything properly and it's good to go for our tests. That's this one here. Um, as you can see from the green check mark, there were no errors at all and everything was good. Here we have our three test runs. We ran a first test, which is a single virtual user running for 10 minutes. We ran a second test that was five virtual users that were built up to over about a minute and then five users plateaued and ran for the rest of the 10 minutes at that level and then we had 10 virtual users where we built up to 10 virtual users and then once we reached that plateau we held it for the duration what we're looking for is to make sure that no page comes back in over 10 seconds. So with one virtual user, we take a look at this and we see that we don't have to dig very deeply. The average page load time was 2.07 seconds. The maximum page load time was 4.27 seconds. So even our worst page response time was less than half of the 10 seconds that we're trying to avoid. So very good. Don't need to dig a whole lot deeper there. Next, we want to take a look at our five virtual user tests. The five virtual user test represents current busy time. Um, the way our site is currently with the number of users that are registered on it, if we have five users on there at once, it's as busy as it gets. So. We have set a quality of service parameter to trigger in, if there is any page taking longer than 10 seconds. And if we bring this up, we'll see that there were two total errors. And the question is, were any of those uh, quality of service? So we'll scroll down. We'll take a look at quality of service page errors. None. If we look at our summary, once again, average page load time, 1.48 seconds. The maximum was 5.25. We're fine. 
Now we'll skip into the future and take a look at what a busy period might look like 12 months from now. You'll notice that the number of errors that we have has jumped up to 43. If we look at our page load time, however, the average is still very low, 1.88, but the maximum has jumped up to 23.87 seconds. If we take a look, we're jumping in, we're showing only the errors, and the quality of service criteria for the home page was violated and instead of returning in under 10 seconds, it re returned in 10.8. You're going to see something very similar for all of these. This was 13 seconds. This one was 10.3. This one was 11. This one was 13.9. This one was 10.8. So these aren't exceeding our 10 second criteria by much, but they are exceeding it. And because we know that we have a lot of successful calls that are being made, successful page calls actually, that are returning in under 10 seconds. This may not be a disaster, but it's something that management needs to look at. Um, so what makes this particularly relevant is the browser-like accuracy, which, which enables you to accurately assess the user experience and make decisions based on this analysis. If we take a look at our report for the uh, 10 virtual users and we take a look at top 10, here you're going to see, once again, our average page load time, which is good. We can take a look at our waterfall. You'll see that we are processing things in parallel. And so that's just like the browser, and we're getting very accurate, um, a very accurate representation of what your users will experience at that level. But if we jump down and take a look at slow pages, but not on average, but the slowest of the slow, you're going to see that indeed page one did at one point return in 23.87 seconds. So there might be some issues. Um, the site uses a CMS, so maybe there's cache being rebuilt, uh, maybe there are some files that need to be recompressed. Something is going on that is causing that. So we clearly see that while the site works fine with up to, ten con with up to five concurrent users, doubling the number of users results in some undesirable slowdown. Not every request is slow and not every page is slow but there is some undesirable slowdown. So at this point, the website owner can decide whether such results warrant further investments in infrastructure or optimization of the web pages themselves. Um, the information is available in the reports and you can take action to make sure that the experience that you have going forward is the best possible experience for your customers. And that's our presentation for today. Thank you very much.